Hi guys, it's Stuart here from Immersive Cinema Rooms. Today we wanted to give you a tour of a room we've just completed up near Bedford. Uh, the clients came to us because they had a room created um, sort of between an old and a new extension and was a bit of an awkward space. They weren't sure what to do with it. It became a bit of a dumping zone. Um, they already are lucky enough to have an office and a, and a study and a playroom in the house. So they just weren't sure what to do with it. They thought about sticking a TV in there, but they've already got two and it was just going to become a, an ordinary TV room. So they called us in, uh, we had a look at it, and we've created a great little room for them, uh, great for them and their grown family, and a great example of how this room, which is four and a half by four meters, uh, can actually be easily transformed for not a massive budget into a great family space, a great space where you know they can sit and watch movies and sports, uh, and just create some great memories. So um, stay tuned and we'll take you inside. See you in a moment. Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, let's take you in the room. So first of all, let's open the door. Um, as you open the door, the first thing you are greeted with is four reclining seats. Um, these are actually in a two by two configuration. So two love seats, um, all fully reclining and in a really nice orange color. Um, honestly, uh, we were a little bit um, unsure when the client chose them. Love the color, but wasn't sure how it's gonna work in the room. Uh, but I actually think it works really well. It look, goes really well with the blue fabric and the lighter carpet and just adds that punch. I think if we'd gone with a, a cappuccino leather or a gray, I think the room would have just been, you know, brought down a bit too much. And it just adds that pop, that bit of zing to the space. But what do you think? You know, let me know in the comments below. Do you like the chairs? What color would you have gone for? You know, let me know what you think. So, um, yeah, so as we said, this room was a bit of a funny one. Um, it's about sort of four meters wide. Um, by four and a half meters long. Um, it was just completely bare walls. Um, if we come up to the back here, you can see up here, we've got a skylight, which was the only light source in the room. So, you know, the clients wanted to put a TV in here and just make it into another lounge, but that really wasn't gonna work. And we really were keen in creating a really nice family space for them. So the first issue we had in this space was we had this pillar. Um, so this is a structural pillar here. And this pillar actually connects to an RSJ out there, which is also structural. Um, this also, when we drew up the design, uh, this is also where the, um, the side speaker is, about here. It's where it goes on Dolby's recommended guidelines. So we were a bit undecided what to do. We didn't have a huge amount of space behind these walls to actually sink it in the wall. Um, so what we did was we built this one out ever so slightly and then hid the speaker in there. And then if we flip over onto the other side here, you'll notice here there's another smaller column. This is completely fabricated. This is not structural whatsoever, but it does give us a good position for the side speaker here as well. And then if we spin you up to the back here, we have a speaker around about in front of us there. And then we have the other speaker over here. Uh, we have our two Kef cube subwoofers on the floor. Um, and then up in the ceiling up here, we have one Atmos channel. And then we have another Atmos channel over here. And then if I spin you around, we basically have our left center right in the, uh, sorry, behind the screen here. Um, the whole room was uh, fabric wrapped, as you can see. So what we did was we studded the walls out with a thin batten. And then in areas like here, um, as you can see, if you look on our Insta page or the, the um, time lapse video, it's also coming. You'll notice we put in there acoustic material. So literally the front section here. And then if I spin you around, the front section here is actually uh, formed of acoustic uh, material in there. That helps stop the uh, the first reflection zone from the front speakers. Also just brings the reflective value of the room down a bit. If we come up the back here, if you look at the, uh, um, the, the photos online, you'll notice that all of these, behind all of these, these are all soft to touch. There's no acoustic material behind there whatsoever. So the back half of the room is quite vibrant. Um, it's quite, you know, it's what you need in respects of not echoey, but it helps the surround in the back. Um, up here, we've got an Epson projector sunk into its own custom housing. And then you'll see in the corner there, we've got a nicely hidden door. Uh, this wall actually is um, 
was put there to hide a sort of triangular room behind it, a very small section which has got some uh, underheating manifolds in there plus the equipment and the network. Um, it can be accessed by just going around the chairs. Um, there's not a huge amount of room, but as the client says, you know, he's not going to go around there much. So he'd rather have, you know, four seats rather than three um, because he only needs to go around there on a couple of occasions. We've also put an IP controllable um, power supplies and that in there, which are controllable via a control four system. So if you know he needs to reboot the skybox or anything like that, he can do that from the remote control. We installed a staging into the room as well. Again, technically not necessary uh, because we don't have a front row of seats, um, but they are a young family. So, you know, we're finding more and more clients like to put bean bags at the front here. And, you know, and if you've got more than four people, you've got that elevation in the seat. So you could put some, you know, some bean bags or some additional seats in the front here um, down the day. You can actually put some more chairs here if you wanted to down the future. And then we don't have to worry about having to change it at any point. So if I spin you around now, uh, you'll see that we're going to have a look at the screen. So the screen in this room is a, a 100 inch fixed frame screen um, and uh, it's in a 16-9 aspect ratio. Um, because we had the door here, um, we had to put the screen over to the right here, um, which is brilliant because the Epsom can, is a centre in the room, but we can shift the lens to one side. So works perfectly because obviously we couldn't move the door. Um, we went for a 16.9 screen because the client's a big sports fan. You know, he likes to go to Vegas or watch Vegas fights. Um, and the trade-off between watching a 16.9, uh, watching a 16.9 image or watching a 235 image on a 16.9 screen was fine to him. Um, and also, it gives us, uh, you know, it gives us bang for square inch. So it's the best screen in here. I think a 235 screen would have looked a bit too small. You can actually see there the image. What's on it is a 235 film off a of sky. And you can see actually it's it's relatively uh, it's relatively thin. So um, I think it gives the best uh, best for the room. Uh, a nice shaggy pile carpet. Uh, lots of uh, space to sit with bean bags and the kids to play if they want. And yeah, and watch great movies. So um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, thanks for staying uh, put. Um, there is a time lapse video of the room which will either be attached to this video or will go up at a later date. So please have a look and see how we built the room. Um, you know, as usual, please like and subscribe to the channel. It really does help. And we'll see you on the next one. Cheers, bye.